Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the grace you've given us in this house to be able to stand strong at our first year anniversary, our first anniversary. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your kindness and your grace. We ask, oh God, that you take charge of this event as we thank you openly with our hearts. Let your presence be felt amongst us. Amen. And for our brethren that are still on the way, we ask that you bring them speedily and safely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To just stop to bit about ourselves because I think this Maybe the first time some of us are meeting each other actually. So we'll talk about us. So we're going to talk, we're going to say our names, full names, names, surnames. We're going to say, um, tell us what we do, um, where in Lagos we are coming from, which location in Lagos. Um, if we're single or married, and um, I think that's fine for internet. So we're going to start with, um, let me start with my right. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Olinye Oita. I'm coming from the Aja Access, um, not single. And I work in a public sector. Thank you. I came from Abelta. And I work in the public sector as well. And I do photography as a side. Thank you. I came from Yaba and I'm I'm an insurance person and also the kitchen and the side also. I came from Sabo. I'm a mainland. I do my business is car. I deal with car. Yeah. I'm a pharmacist. I could do more the car. I'm a pharmacist and um, I'm single. I'm coming from Surulere. I would have access. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Kelly Tayo. I'm a member of EIC, Entrepreneurs in Christ. Oh, okay. I'm a real estate advisor. I'm based in Lagos. I shop for between me and Okay, so my name is Messi Obey. Um, I'm also part of EIC. I distribute um, personal use products, personal products, and I'm married with children. In my love, I'm the, I'm the media, I'm into the media, the graphics, the video, and the my name is uh, Wally, JTK Vivid Production. Uh, I'm married. I'm a cinematographer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Nathaniel. I'm uh, a team member of EIC. I'm the one with the camera. So um, what's next on the program is um, praise and worship. So we want to worship God, we want to praise God, open up your hearts and let's worship God. Just keep expressing yourself. Don't wait for any song. You are the worshiper. Give him glory. Father, we give you glory. There is no like you. We adore you. We reverence you. We reverence you, our King. From January to February, March, every mail. From this time last year to this time today.
we are here to say thank you to our God. To say thank you to the ancient of days. The I am that I am. He has been so faithful. Has God been faithful to you? Yes. Has yes. God been faithful been to faithful, you? Faithful. That you can see me, that you can hear me. He is God and we should say thank you. Father, we are here to say thank you. Thank we can you. testify. We have seen him. We have seen his works. We have felt him. We know that he's here. And we have seen testimonies. Can we say thank you, Lord, for the help of your spirit? Because we are alive to, to see this prophecy that you that you gave to your to your servants in our days, in our time, in our self-fellowship, one of our self-fellowship. We said we are like secret weapons. Oh, the devil has not, he, he doesn't see us coming as we are in our marketplace, as we are doing our businesses. The devil doesn't know that we are we are anointed for our father's business. And so as we meet people, we ex we, 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 we bring them into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We, we have that influence in their lives. So let us thank him. Thank you, Lord, for your alpha of your spirit. For the alpha of your spirit. And if you have not even received the Holy Spirit, by, with evidence of speaking in tongues, open up your heart because today, today, you shall receive if only you believe. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Our hearts are filled with praise. Thank you, Lord. Can we pray for expansion and growth of EIC? And also we should understand that an expansion and growth of EIC also means that an expansion and growth of our, it's going to be an expansion and growth of our own individual lives and businesses too. We're going to take a text from first, um, sorry, Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3. And it says, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. It says that do not spare, lengthen the courts and strengthen your stakes. For you will expand to the right and to the Amen. left, Amen. and your descendants will inherit the nation and make the desolate cities inhabited. So yeah, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Use the scripture And um, we thank you specially. Before we go into testimonies, um, I want to be the first to, to, to say my own testimony first. My sister, you will help me because I don't have a good singing voice, but I owe God the sacrifice of praise, me personally. The next thing on the agenda is testimonies, just so you know. We didn't print the program because we planned this program very last minute. This, this whole thing was planned within seven days. Seven days, and we just put it together. And my testimony is on behalf of myself and my wife. In December 2020, I went on a prayer retreat, and I was praying, seeking God's face for six hours. My business in Lagos had failed then. And I was asking God, what next? What next? And I think I was in about the fourth hour of prayer, seeking God's face. It was the end of the year, um, around December 28th. 
and I began to hear the Holy Spirit speak to me expressly. Raise a tribe of marketplace ministers. People who are called into marketplace ministry and who are gifted with the spirit of entrepreneurship. So I wrote down a few things on that day. When I left my retreat, went back home to my wife, and um, I began to tell her what God had said to us. And we were like, how are we going to do this? We know nobody in ministry. We are not pulpit ministers ourselves. We just live in the U.S. with our, our small family. We have two kids, a boy and a girl. And um, God was emphasizing the vision had to be carried out in Africa. So we had no idea how to start it. What to even start with, what to begin with. No clue. We moved back home. My wife said, heck no, not yet. The kids are too young for that, and it's just a small thing that God has called us to do. I went back to check, like, God, are you sure we should not do it in America? He said, no, Africa. And in 12 months, we began to plan approximately January 2021. And uh, we just put some plans together, not knowing what direction to take. And then in June 2021, um, God connected me with uh, my brothers. Guys, there are four celebrations happening right now. So this is the one in Lagos. The same one is happening in Abuja, one is happening in Accra, one is happening in Nairobi. Just say hi to guys, the guys on the, uh, on the camera, just for, 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 for guys in the other countries. Just wave at them. Hello guys. Hello. God bless you guys. So, myself and the country leader, Michael, Dr. Michael Nkrumah, was connected in Ghana. Myself and Brian Akins in Abuja. We began to pray, pray together, and God began to give us some more, flesh out the idea for us, basically. And we started EIC approximately a year from now, a year ago. This today actually makes it one year. But um, my testimony, my personal testimony is the fact that God has supplied me three unique things of which I promised to give him a sacrifice of praise. But I'm not a singer, and I, you're a very good singer. God bless you. Um, he supplied wisdom for the vision. He supplied people to carry the vision. And he supplied grace. Grace for this vision. Grace. We're not going to celebrate this anniversary, honestly. Um, because we didn't hear from the Holy Spirit. I'm the kind of person that if I don't hear expressly, I don't bother because I've seen how God guides my life and guides our affairs as an organization and as a family. And so, even when I'm at something that I'm meant to do, I'll ask him, are you sure? I'm not proud. If you're not in here, I'll turn back and go. And so he gave us a final um, say-so around the end of the month of August. And he said, you can do a small Thanksgiving service. And then we began to scramble around. And these two ladies, this powerhouse is Akudo and Mercy, Please, guys, give them a hand of applause because they're doing fantastic. We are the leaders in Lagos, and um, they put all of this together within seven days, literally. Seven days. Um, also, the other leadership team in Ghana, in Kenya, and in Abuja, they put everything together in seven days. Because for us as an organization, alignment with the Holy Spirit is the most important thing than for us to just put together a big event, we, we plan and we eat rice and drink, and the Holy Spirit is not, does, not, does not seal it or condone it. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So this whole thing has been the work of God. It's not man's wisdom. I began to question God, like, what would I do? I'm in the U.S., the folks you called me to are in Nigeria. He said, not even Nigeria, only go to Ghana. I said, Ghana. I know nobody in Ghana. He said, you know, you know Dr. Michael Nkrumah. 
He said, go to Kenya. I said, Kenya. And the last country we are going to expand into this year is South Africa. And we began to, yes, and we began to put things, things like this. He said, teach entrepreneurs how to pray. That was the first thing he told us. Many entrepreneurs in these countries are competing against contemporaries that have learned how to move their life forward by means of an altar that is not raised to God. You are doing business. You are a honest, hard-working person. You are doing your best. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. For the glory of God rises upon you. For darkness shall cover the land, and gross darkness the people. So it's not that you are not doing your best. It's the fact that there is something called gross darkness, a layer of gross darkness that has enveloped people and they can't seem to succeed. And then when you break through from that gross darkness, then there is something called darkness that the devil has laid over the landscape. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a poopy minister, so I have not used the microphone. So they can hear me better now. Is it better? All right. So that was the idea at Entrepreneurs in Christ to raise a praying people at first. We began to teach people how to pray, how to raise an altar of prayer for God that could move their life forward. For those who have taken the classes that we offer, you would see that we cook prayer at Entrepreneurs in Christ. Prayer is cooked in this house. That's why people were looking like, what is we doing? Just praying, praying, praying. Our emphasis is prayer. We are a praying people. And so, I was like, okay, how do we even form this vision? Then, as if the Holy Spirit wanted to make it harder, I said, take no offering from anybody. I said, what? At least it should fund itself. He said, no, I've not called you to raise offering. That's not why I've called you. I said, so how do we fund it? He said, just you and your wife fund it. I said, okay. We started doing that as well. And God made grace available. We've not felt a pinch ever since we started this vision. It's just been funding everything in Nairobi, in Accra, Ghana, in Abuja, in Lagos. We're also in Port Harcourt. We're also in uh, some of the southwestern states in Bardo, um, uh, Oyo State, Ogun State, and Osho State. For those watching, we bless you guys. Thanks for watching and all of that. So, God sent people, he, sent, he gave us the wisdom on how to raise this, and he gave us grace, he made grace available for us to be able to do what we are doing. Entrepreneurs in Christ is a call to marketplace ministry. The fact that your business can be your pulpit, that's the idea. One of my childhood friends is here, Dr. Kwenga Gato, and we go way back from when we were four years old in primary school. But we have some friends who are Muslim, happens to be born Muslim, like Khalid. They are not bad guys, they are good people. No, but none of us chose how we were born on the earth. If you were born to Muslim parents, then you found that you were Muslim. These guys will not make their way to the four corners of a church, except there is a wedding. So they're not going to hell because we will not leave the pulpit and try to extend our grace, salvation message to them in the marketplace. The marketplace is anything that extends beyond the four corners of a church. And that's what we do at Entrepreneurs in Christ. The fact that you are in several industries, entrepreneurs all over here, several in industries, several countries, and your life can become the message for those people that will not come to a church to hear a salvation message to be saved. So God has supplied not just grace, wisdom, and people. He supplied money, funding, that we've lacked nothing. We owe nobody nothing. Everything we do, we don't pressure anybody. Somebody will come like, why don't you take offerings in your meeting? Like God hasn't called us to take offerings. We have a genuine love for people 
to raise them into marketplace ministry. So, I have a Thanksgiving song that I want you to to sing, and I'll dance. Mine is a, I'm not a good dancer, but please, this is my offering, my personal offering to God for his faithfulness and on behalf of my wife and I. My wife, who should I be? And she's a dancer. She's not here. But uh, she's watching online, and I will raise this offering on our behalf. We don't claim to be the founders of this vision. We are just co-founders. The Holy Spirit himself is the founder of entrepreneurs in Christ. And so if we didn't do it, somebody else would have done it. Priesthood, the idea of priesthood is giving your body to a spirit to walk, to possess you, to use your legs, use your hand, use your mouth and your eyes and your ears to reach other people. And that's what we do. So the Holy Spirit is the founder and he's here in person, even though you can't see him. But um, I want to just get a good Yoruba song, danceable Yoruba song. Um, where's the guy on the key on the saxophone? He do a barada, he do a barada, Gora Mio, happy day, Jessica. Gora Mio.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have a testimony or you want to dance, you want to sing, please come before the Lord. You know that EIC has blessed you. So if you're yes, okay, we have one, two, three, three, okay, four, five, six, hallelujah. Okay, so I'll go first. Seven. Okay, two minutes each. Yes. All right, so if you're singing, you sing. If you're dancing, you dance. Two minutes. <laughs> Don't add all of them. All right, so my testimony. Hmm. In a sentence, I would say, God put, should I say, 10, 20 years? Hmm? put it together in I joined in February or March. So that's how many months? Six months. Six months. Isn't God wonderful? Because I have searched and searched and searched. I, I right from when I was a teenager or so I think I was a teenager then I saw this um full gospel businessman. So I was like ah wow so people can actually be in business and serve God you know, then it was like, all these people that are in business, are you sure they are serving God? And then, so it has always been on my mind. And then on Instagram one day, say one day, one day. I saw an ad. I didn't have to think twice. I just sent it to you. And here I am today. My life has changed. I know where I was. I know where I am now. Praise the Lord. I understand the Bible better. I can pray more. In fact, my business, hmm, just say thank God for my life. So, how many minutes did I take? <laughs> Alright, so who was the first person? Okay. Yes, ma'am, please clap as they come. Tell us your name. Okay, I'll just tell you my name. Alright, please tell us your name and what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I just joined EIC many one month. And I can tell you that it has been so awesome in God's presence on that altar. Every day we we'll go for prayer, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, even our Tuesday forerunners. It has been so awesome. I want to just thank God because that platform has really changed my life, my spiritual life. My sister here introduced me to it, and she just told me that, ah, there's one platform I would like you to join. And at that time, my phone was back. And I said, okay, when I get the phone, I will definitely join. And since I have joined, I will tell you that the way I hear from God now is more different. I tell you that God speaks to me like in a different way that I've never experienced before. I now know how to even pray more better. I can pray in tongues for several hours without getting tired of life going like before. And I'm right here to say, Thank you, Pastor Damola. That's what I call you. <laughs> Pastor Damola, thank you so much. Thank God for giving you that vision. And thank you for bringing it out to every one of us. And if you are here, you are here to join. I tell you that you are missing something. Yeah. Um, I was, I do business on Instagram and some other things. So, first, so one day I was just going to meet you. And I saw entrepreneurs in Christ. So I took like one week or more studying, went through the website, and it just felt like, ah, just felt at home with it, it. So one day I just sent a DM. No, then I contacted Victoria. I've not seen her. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ah. wonderful person. Hello, <laughs> 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 Victoria. <laughs> Hello. So she just. She took some time, she called me, and the, the interview was so, so tough. I was wondering, ah, what is this all about? As in, she got to know everything. Ah. So I just said, well, let me just be answering her questions and all that. So she now said she, she's going to go get back to me. So I'm not saying after all these questions, she's going to get back to me. That. So later on, she contacted me, added me to the WhatsApp group. And then when I began to join the meeting, I started noticing something that was I'm not really seen, you know, as a Christian. Like some of us that have lived our life for God, you 
almost our youthful age. Let's say something different. But there are two um, fellowship and messages that actually have transformed me. That's one uh, Pastor Denola talked about uh, breaking the power of witchcraft. That message has, has, has really taken me to another level. Mm -hmm. And the second one is breaking so tie. Mm -hmm. Why am I thanking God for those two messages? In case you are seeing it online, I don't want to edit it properly. Uh, I really want to edit it properly because one, it has saved a sister's marriage. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. my, uh, my younger sister, too, the thing is solving a lot of problems. So when people you know, come to me for challenges, I need that I related to that. I don't even talk. I said, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. After watching, you get back to me. Yeah. So after Amen. watching, I just realized that they are no longer the same. <laughs> so I really want to thank God and uh, you know, if they will give me permission to edit those videos <laughs> properly. <laughs> so you have your permission. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good I thank God that I am in this house. It's God's house. And first of all, I want to thank God for the pastor. I'll call him pastor. That's what I'm calling him. I'm posting my pastor. I don't know. I'll tell you that is <laughs> Apostle and Pastor Damola for heeding to his call. Because if God was telling him to do this thing and he didn't do it, I'm sure all of us wouldn't have been here. And like he said, God will have used somebody else. Maybe some other people somewhere, but it will not be here. It will not be us sitting here here. So I have one habit. And that habit is like is that I scrutinize the internet. That internet app. Hi, Google it for things that are going to be beneficial to my life, not all those rubbish things. That's what I do. So I have a body uh, to be doing evangelism online. And I've been running away from it for years. So when I started uh, searching the internet, I opened my Instagram account and all what I see is that people that are doing business is always just do things about their business. So I'm always interested in, in people who are using their platform to also share the gospel. That was when I saw the heart. So when I saw that, I, I applied, I sent mail, I checked. I, I, if I send it, I'll go and Google that name, I checked. Who are these people? I checked, everywhere checked. So I sent a message to, uh, to them and I started. And I, I would say my life has not been the same. Uh, since then, I'm a Christian. I've been born again before I joined the board. I've been, I've been reborn again, <laughs> reborn. And uh, my prayer life, uh, God, God has taken me from the, that low level of prayerlessness, even when you know that you're supposed to pray and that uh, you're not praying. God has taken me from that level of prayerlessness to a level of almost, as I was, I didn't join the meeting yesterday because I was not around. So I was, as I stopped at the junction of my house about few minutes to seven, and I was speaking in tongues till I got over. <laughs> you know, before if I see people doing that, I would be like, I this person crazy. <laughs> but I was, I started doing that, I was speaking in tongues in the house, I would tell my daughter, are you two speaking in tongues? And that was the time she traveled and she told me that, mommy, do you know I pray now? I don't need to tell, you know, my, myself and I will wake up every night. It's not just today that we will pray. Every night we will wake up. I will pray and prayer has been part of us. And have, apart from that, there will be uh, impartation of, uh, I don't know how to put it, let me just put it, impartation of uh, spiritual revelation from God. That's how I want to be. And has been coming and I know that I'm just starting. And through this platform, through this, through this family, the, God is going to take me to the next level of my life. Yeah. And we have some core values that we have. It says uh, the first one, relationship with the Holy Spirit. God has helped me in that. Love. God is, God is helping me in that love. <laughs> because I'm a very private, I'm very a quiet person. I don't really, I don't know, I find it difficult to reach out to people. So God is helping me in that love. And uh, fasting. Uh, at times I will not. I'm not. I'm not saying this to 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 boast. I'm not here to say ah, ah, yes, yes, I can fast. Yes. But I see that when I when I fast now, I will not even get hungry. Like at times when I'm fasting around 11, 12, I'll be hungry. I'll be. I'll go and eat. At times, I will be fasting. I'll be praying. And around seven, nine p.m., I will not have broken the fast, and I will not feel anything. 
And I just thank God for, for that for that grace. I thank God for all the other benefits that I'm still going to enjoy here. I give glory to God for here. I see. Thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. Who is next? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Um, the Bible says in Revelation that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. That alone is that you should inspire us to share our testimonies. Um, I joined EIC in August. I I didn't know it was even the month of the healing anointing. And before then, I was already praying for healing. Like, I don't know what healing. Um, my mom for probably since 2020 was diagnosed with diabetes and it's been up and down, her blood sugar level has just been going up and down and it's just been encouragement, medications, either orthodox medicine or supplement, whichever one, but we're just going through it. And apart from physical healing, I was also looking at emotional healing, mental healing and in August I was just going through a phase of like God say something like everywhere is quiet, like what's going on, what's the next season? I just need a word from God and I was also looking at community because I also shared with Victoria that I had um, spoken to a friend of mine who lives in Abuja and we were talking about community and I was like, all my friends in Lagos, they're just very lukewarm Christians, like I need people that are actually like rolling with Jesus very well so that we can do Bible studies and things and we had that conversation that night and after the call, I went on Instagram and then I saw it and I'm like, okay, yeah. I was just talking about community and this popped up. Yeah. So, uh, this is clearly the Holy Spirit joined um, AIC um, um, August and turned out that it was also the month of um, the healing yeah. and anointing and we we'll keep praying for healing. Someone who I met a couple of months ago, I bumped into her just crying. I was like, oh, what happened? My mom was also dealing with diabetes so bad that the woman already had like sore that wasn't going because of the diabetes. And I was able to encourage her. Um, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 said, Therefore, encourage and comfort one another and build up one another. And I was able to do this. And the Holy Spirit also moved me to pray for her more. And um, some weeks ago, I reached out to her and I was like, how is your mom? She said, thank you, Father. My mom is doing so great. She's getting better and she's well. And just two days ago, my mom called me and said, her, um, her, her diabetes um, level has been very good. So there's no diabetes, actually not her diabetes level, her blood sugar level, like it's been so good, it's been great. She's she's not feeling tired, all the symptoms are like, there's no diabetes basically, so there's healing here. And I've been able to get that anointing for healing and thanks to EIC, thanks to our leaders, um, um, Pastor Damola, um, and, and um, Pastor Amy, all of them, like, Thank God for them that they're teaching us and we're able to pray together and the Holy Spirit is clearly moving within all of us and we're seeing the results of it. So thank God for that. Hallelujah. Oh, glad I'm here. I really want to thank God. Seeing little stresses like this. Ah, uh, I am a dish of identity. I joined this um, commission some a couple of months ago. Together. First thing I just want to quickly appreciate God is song. Oh, because of song. After you sing, that's all. I won't take too much time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the song One says, song. Um, Dependable, dependable God. He loves the miles away.
just want to appreciate God for the linking and the connections I get recently. They are amazing. As in, I was thinking that just little things, you know, I started just in a very little way. I I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, to get blown up like that. It was like a play. I I I tutor as in I'm in charge of the teaching. And most times I take home lessons before I realize it. Recently, as in from one person to another, the leaky was so drastic that I could not just control it. As in, I could no longer control my own personal time. I was just looking at it and saying, God, what is just this? And my pastor, my brother, <laughs> breaking ground, you know, he said something about breaking ground, you know. There was a time we were praying about it. I, I spoke to God about it. I needed black land. I needed large, you know, places to cover. And before you realize it, I, from one family to another family, from one family without personal invitation, without any adverts, without anything, you know, people begin to work for my favor. Places I could not reach, as in houses I know if I had to do it myself, I won't be able to get access to the place. As in with kings, with people I cannot measure up with. As in, when God says, see it thou a man, diligent, in his business. I cut that on our platform, see? as in the version for here I see. See it out in his business. I got as in my head was just oh God. And before you realize it, I was gaining access to as in people who could just call kings. And before you realize it, God has opened up for outside. As in not just within Nigeria. Also amazing. Me, just me. You know, to tell somebody outside from Nigeria, I just want to give God for this privilege to be family and God and all the glory of God to the glory of God. I want to say thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Emmanuel Osho. Uh, you know me as Emmanuel Newness on the platform. And of course, uh, I like to relate with that. And uh, I want to say, uh, it all started on Instagram. I just got that link there. And I joined, and then I was interviewed, and all this stuff like that. And then I came in. And ever since, I must tell you, it has been from glory to glory. God has been opening doors for me as well. And aside from that, uh, for any of us that is here that has that is still contemplating. I tell you, there is a move of God that you cannot afford to miss. If you dare miss it, I tell you, you have missed something so great in your life. One thing I have also learned from Pastor Daula is the fact that he's not only telling you to pray, he will teach you how to it will teach you the kind of results you are likely to get. And that has been missing in my Christian life over time. And so when I got hooked up with that platform, it was like, you know, a dream come true. And uh, I don't think, if it is possible, uh, I would have asked him to locate to Nigeria, or I possibly would locate. <laughs> thank, thank God for technology. <laughs> thank God for technology. But of course, I tell you, uh, it's a it's a platform that I, I'm encouraging people to join, and then it has been a blessing to us. If I continue, I won't stop. Please just let me. And then I want to say a very big thanks to Alita. Thank you for when I was sick. You called me. You prayed for me and I was healed. And so many other people on that platform as well. Uh, I cannot mention you all. You have been so wonderful on that platform. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, my testimony well, I thank God for EIC. I've been, I've known Apostle that mother, that's for me. I've known him 
for a while, I think three years now, but I'll call myself a younger sister to him, actually. Okay. So, my testimony goes like this, and they all know that I'm very shy in camera, but I have to give this testimony. I remember it's, it's relating to our cell meetings. We have cell meetings, actually, which we launched last year, so I'm indirectly inviting you to. So, when we launch, we're contemplating, looking for locations for this cell meeting and it was heavy on my heart. I was like, I want to do this thing, but I'm staying with my father. And I was thinking, I said, okay. Then at that same time, we, my dad has been, that property has been in the courts for years. I'm sure up to 15 to 20 years. So you know how Nigerian court cases, he used it for a business and he had paid all the, um, the all he had um, the capital i think that's the uh, but the bank kept on multiplying the interest and he wrote to them he told them that even the business he had stopped but they kept on to he had to take them to court and then at then like 10 to 15 years ago the interest the bank had accrued on that property was more than 20 something million then though no, we're not even now then so my mom was like, let's settle this thing out of court. The lawyer said, let's go to court. Okay. By the time then, I didn't even know so much. But now, when this whole um, thing started again, I know he has been going to court, and my dad is even old now, so he doesn't even go. It's the lawyer that goes and gives you that. So the lawyer now called and said, ah, that's finally your judgment. The last time they were supposed to give a judgment, the judge um, died. So they started all over again. So that's how we started the whole process and the lawyer called that the judgment to be on so 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 they do have. I said thinking, I said, where will we even start from? That the truth is just that my dad wasn't even really open about everything. What we even know is just the lawyer that told us. And he didn't even want to just, you know, men of that, that age, they are very, they will not want to tell you. So I started praying, praying. I started asking God for mercy because we didn't know what had gone on. We didn't know what had been said. We never went for the court case. It was just mercy. I was praying. I think I used the scripture mic. I started praying. Mercy, mercy. Then I remember there was a day we had a meeting, like pharmacy, I'm a pharmacist, so we had a pharmacy school meeting and Mr. Damala was traveling that day. He called me and we were just talking, uh, like we just talk update. And he just told me, I had already told him about and I told him about the case and everything. So we we're just talking and he just said, A season of favor is opening up to you. Pray that your father would benefit out of that season. So from then, my prayer point changed from mercy to favor. Mm. And I continued yeah. praying and I continued praying. Eventually, from when the court case started then, they had to stop the, the interest reading and everything. So for, we had a moratorium of like 20, 15 to 20 years that nothing. But we know if the bank had actually settled down to sort out that thing, you know how much it would be. So we're just praying. And that Monday, we, we didn't hear from the lawyer. I kept quiet. But I had this piece. I had this piece. What I just did was we have an empty flat in the compound. I just handed it over to the cell. I said, I called him, I said, this is property for the cell. Let them use it. That's where we are going to use it. We prayed, we said thank God and everything. We started planning. That Monday we didn't hear from the lawyer. I had I already had that piece, that economy of peace. And it was like it was settled. Then on Saturday morning, I don't even know, if, I think the lawyer is even dramatic, said, he didn't call us on the phone, he just came. That this, 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 this. They now called me that. The court had already settled and told us to pay just five million for everything. And that's how the case just ended. And we just paid five million. I think five million is just a step of everything that has gone on. This is a case of 20 years. If you see the way I ran on Monday to pay that money. <laughs> So that they will not even change their mind. So I just want to thank God because this is one of my father's like that property is like the one of his you know that when you come to Lagos from village <laughs> where you <laughs> put your feet. So when I know all how many people have passed through that property, but it is really God. It is really God. Because part of this why I'm sharing this testimony is because it's a lady's testimony that made me understand. So, sorry, I'm I know I'm taking time. A lady's testimony, she said. She's not a member of Deeper Life, but there was a period that Deeper Life near the property. This is a mama that was giving this testimony. And she said, 
she gave the property to the deeper life people. She said they should just be using it. She said since that day, till now that she's old, I know how many properties they have in that area now. I know how many properties they have in that area. So what I just want to say is, when you when God has asked you to lay down something, to lay down something, truth be told, God can use anybody. God, even as I'm standing here, God can use me. God can even use Mr. Daham, Apostle Damola. But if God has laid something in your heart, please answer that call. Answer that call and just move with it. It's not in your own strength, actually. It is not in your strength. It is God that will furnish you with everything you need. So I'm just using this avenue also to invite you to this cell meeting. You can see what God has done to make a cell come to life. You should know that he is really there. You should know that in that cell, he has something for everybody. This is a cell for like-mindedness for all of us. It's not the cell. Yes, there's a good cell you go to your church. But this is where you, your business, eh, like it's like if it's like a seed, you crack it open. And you have an understanding that you'll be different. I just thank God for everything. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gates. I want to thank God for making me a part of this platform. I just joined, I think today is two weeks. And when I got called for this, the physical program, I said I'm not going to miss it for anything. I joined um, last two weeks. My business was going through some things and it was quite affecting me. It was affecting me. Uh, okay. So that afternoon I wasn't feeling so well and I had, I had it in mind that God should please lead me to there should be a platform where entrepreneurs or people that do business shall will be gathering together for the sake of Christ. And I was just going through Instagram after making my normal routine post. I'm like, okay, let me see if I can see anything that make me laugh, you know. And then I came across this ad, Entrepreneurs for Christ. I was like, okay, okay, anything that has gone shall get my attention. And I immediately DM'd her and then she called. I've not really been consistent, but I go through the post, I go through the WhatsApp uh, messages, and I get filled. And then I was called for this program. And my testimony actually started from here. When I came in, I felt this peace, that there is a hunger, that, you know, this hunger of, I want to be in a group where they are talking about, you know, God, where business owners, market people are talking about God, and then came in here and, that hunger was quenched. You know, the prayer, I felt so peaceful. You know, that uh, verse of the scripture where God said, where you seek, you shall find. Yeah. I have been seeking and now I've actually found wow. Praise yeah. God. I did, I was conceived from a small retreat and to see what God is doing in the lives of people. It humbles, it humbles myself and my wife and um, this is only the beginning. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The idea is that each person becomes strong Amen. in God Amen. in such a way that your family members will know who you are. When did you yeah. yeah. But I want to take this song for God because of the testimonies. All the glory must be to the Lord.
faith. Amen. Let the angels that bring songs to God's people, songs, hymns, begin to come to speak to you because God sees your heart. When you sing, it is your heart that God sees. Father, I ask, O oh God, that you enlarge the capacity of our hearts. Amen. So that you will stay and remain humble Amen. to be able to carry what's coming. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ask God why. For a very long time, until you encounter a grace that can shift you. God spoke to me about you when you were listening to prayer and worship, and I forgot. And then you sang again, and he told me to pray for you. You asked God why, and it is time for him to answer you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When a person sings, it is their heart that God sees. Your voice is merely a tool to express the shape of your heart, the context of your heart. That's why your song, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart is where the mouth speaks. It is your heart that God sees. Some of us have frog voice. When we sing, at least God is seeing our hearts. That's what matters. Anything you do as an entrepreneur, if you can put your heart into it, God will see your heart. And God sees your heart. And is ready to move it to another level. Amen. God bless you. Guys, you're welcome again to Entrepreneurs in Christ. We're sorry we've taken so much time. And um, it's a Thanksgiving service. The instruction we had was to make it a Thanksgiving service. So thank God for His goodness, His mercies. We are not here to celebrate, that's the truth. We have to debate this balloon that is here. Ask them. Because the instructions God gave us is just make it a thanksgiving service. And so that's what we came here to do, to thank God for everything He's done. So the testimonies are a means of thanksgiving. The praise, the worship, my dance, everything is a thanksgiving. Um, but to give context to the anniversary, to mark it and to seal it, I will express the mind of God for what we are doing in Lagos. My sister, I came, what's your name? What's your name? Gift, gift, God bless you. God bless you, yeah. When you pray, you pray with the scripture, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. There is a realm where peace comes from, a dimension. I won't be telling you if I've not experienced it. And I can check, there's an economy of peace that you can check and have inside of you. I can't say much. Let me pray for you. Father, I plant in her heart and in her soul and in her spirit a tree, the tree, the seeds of peace. I ask that you let it grow into a tree that will produce fruit that she will eat from. Amen. A peace of God that passes all human understanding. Let it be grown in sound and Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering Amen. prayers. For obeying the voice of God and for coming. Surprise her. Amen. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Okay, let's try to get something done. Give me about 30 minutes or so. And lend me your ears. I'm a teacher, so don't mind all this apostle, pastor, don't mind me. Um, I love to teach. That's what God has given me. And um, I hope that I can help you understand a few things as it pertains to the theme that God gave us this year at Entrepreneurs in Christ. The theme is simply called Anointed for the Father's Business. Yeah. Just as you have a business, God has a business. He has a business. And that business is marketplace ministry. It's that simple. God is in the business of winning souls. If he was not, he wouldn't have said, I will make you fishers of men. Wow. Up, <laughs> 
So, um, it's still working, it seems. It's still working. So, before we begin to talk, I have a small memory verse for everybody. Lend me your ear and you'll say this with me. And I want you to memorize this memory verse from the depth of your heart. Psalm 92, verse number 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Can we try? Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. One more time. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You should know that verse from the back of your mouth. It is a promise that God made his children. But what's most important is that there are different kinds of anointings. And if you make the mistake to think it's just one anointing, you'll be cutting yourself short. The anointings that God makes available for a marketplace minister, that anointing or those anointings are littered all across scriptures. And so you, in your diligence, must find it. The way God's kingdom is structured, it is only the things that you know or that are revealed to you that belong to you. If you don't discover it, if it's not revealed to you, you can't have it. You can't have what you don't know. You can't. My brother, what's your name? Dickin Joseph. If Dickin Joseph did not know... Hello? Hello? If the King Joseph, this one is better. Yeah. If the King Joseph did not know that the next room, the room next door, is full of gold, he would sit here, be praying to God for money. That's how the scriptures are. If you don't know, you won't have it. You won't have it. Our business at Entrepreneurs in Christ is people have even sometimes paid you for it. Cooking is a home. You're a good chef. A good cook. If somebody pays for that gift, it is a horn that God wants to exalt. It's that simple. Drawing can be a horn. Singing can be a horn. My sister, what you have, your singing gift and ability, it's a horn. It's a horn in the spirit. You see, the issue with us Christians is that we don't see from the realm of God. We see things from how human beings see them. And because we see from our perspective, we are very limited. If Akudo were watching this woman singing, my dear sister, peace is the name, right? If everybody here is watching you singing, we'll be seeing a talented, gifted singer. But when God looks down, he's seeing a horn, literally. He doesn't see a talented singer. He sees a horn. It's like the horn of a, a cow. In case, you, in case you're wondering, he sees a horn. So when that psalmist says, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. He was very specific. He did not just say you will exalt the horn. He described how it needed to be exalted. It's like the horn of a unicorn. If you see a unicorn, it's pointing up. That alone speaks volume. If your gift and your talent and your ability, your endowment is not pointing up to God, it's not God word, 
it cannot be exalted. You will see good singers. They are at a bar singing for people that are drinking beer. That's a horn. They are gifted. But it's not God word. It's not God word. He said like the horn of a unicorn. It points like this, if you can see a unicorn. It points, which means it's exalting God. Cooking is a horn that can exalt God. The simplest thing. I had a friend when I was in high school in Nigeria. Went to my mother's high school. And this guy was the fastest runner. I was a red house, up red house. <laughs> and he was very good in running. He was very fast. What was funny was that he was a plum kid. Plum. But he was always the fastest. And each time he came first, he would thank God. That's a horn that is pointing Godward. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. That is the result, the evidence of an anointing. When God puts an anointing upon your head, upon your life, your horn is exalted. That cooking ability, that styling ability, that fashion ability you have, it will be exalted. That's how it works. It's just an anointing drops on your head and it gives you authority in a particular area. So this year, God gave us this topic called Anointed for the Father's Business. And I was on a retreat when he began to expand it in our hearts. Like many Christians just know the anointing for the anointing. But as we've done at Entrepreneurs in Christ, we've explained every single part of the ones that we thought were important to a marketplace minister. If you have the call of marketplace ministry, and how you know it's very simple. You run a business and you love God. God wants to use your business as your pulpit. Is that simple? You don't have to stand on a pulpit in a church in a nice fancy building to bring souls to Christ. You can do it from the comfort of your business. So, we looked at a few anointings from the beginning of the year. And this month is the month of September. And we specifically chose the ones that we believed were important for a kingdom entrepreneur to have. These anointings, if you have them, one of them, two of them, three of them, to make a difference in your life. It will. Hmm. So, it is for us to have the skill of being able to check the word of God and find where an anointing is. Because he said, ask and it shall be given. So if you ask for it, and you conform to the principles of God, he will give it to you. It's simple. Of course, you have to seek in prayers, fasting, consecration, obedience to God, all of that. So we started out in the month of um, January, explaining the anointing generally. Every month this year, at Entrepreneurs in Christ, we've explained the anointing what the anointing is, what kind of anointing. And so, I will just give us a quick summary so that those that are present can position themselves to get the one that you desire the most. The first way to get anything from God is to hunger and thirst for it. You must. If you don't, you can't get it. So, in the month of January, our leaders in Abuja, Lagos, no, Abuja, Ghana, and um, mostly Abuja leaders, they explain the concept of the anointing. The anointing is simply an oil God drops on your life, on your head, to give you authority in a particular area of field. And it will, be clear, it will be like night and day. If you are anointed in something, there will be an ease with which you will do it. Because it's a horn. And that horn being exalted, it will be evident that you received something from God. 
we were doing testimonies now, and I looked at those testifying, and I, and I was just smiling because they didn't tell you guys half of the story. Some of these testimonies are very personal, very personal. And so they will give us the edited version, which is okay. But I know the full version, so that's why I have to sing that song, because it's only God that have done it. What we do at Entrepreneurs in Christ is by an anointing. And there are diverse kinds of anointing. In the month of February, we went into the kingship anointing. The kingship anointing. The kingship anointing was the first grace or anointing we looked at that you as a kingdom entrepreneur that you need. Revelations 1 verse number 6. The Bible says, For he hath made us kings and priests unto God. The coming of Jesus Christ, his birth, death, resurrection, and ascension translated every Christian that you see in this room gave you the right to become a king and to become a priest. But if you don't know and if you remain at the very bare minimum or minimal level of Christianity, you will not scratch what it means to have a kingship anointing. You won't. Hmm. It's a very powerful anointing. And I gave an illustration. You know, in this land, we have some prominent kings in this Nigeria. For instance, in Yoruba land, we have the Oni of Ife, prominent king. We have the Sultan of Sokoto, prominent king. Which other ones? Olu of Wari? Eh? Obi of Onich. All these places. These are Taiwan level kings in the world of men. And I explained to you guys that the world of men is a poor mimic of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. We are just trying to mimic something. And then if you look deep, even in this Lagos, you have several kings. You have the king of Lagos itself. Then you have the smaller, smaller kings. They'll call them Bale or something like that. That is exactly how the kingdom of God works. There are different kings in different levels. And every single king throws their, cast their crown down at the king of kings. You worship the king of kings. The Bible says the four and twenty elders are forever around the throne. They cast down their golden crowns and they shout home. Guys, forgive me, I didn't welcome some people. Can I take a quick pause? I want to recognize Pastor Femi's presence here, a very good friend of mine. You're welcome, sir. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. Yeah. Um, if there's any other man of God in the house, man or woman of God in the house, let us know so we can recognize you. It takes time and it's work to serve God, trust me. So I always honor people that are in ministry. So just as you see these different levels of kings in Lagos or in Nigeria, that is how you have different levels of kings in the name of God. And when God anoints you with oil in this area, the kingship anointing, he gives you a throne that you can walk from. And there are different thrones in God's kingdom. The higher your throne is, the more authority you have. The Bible says there is power in the words of the king. There's power. When you see some men of God and they make a decree or a declaration and something changes in the life of that person, they are doing that from a kingship anointing. It's not the priestly anointing. It's the kingship or the kingly anointing that makes for that to happen. We have a fantastic testimony um, at EIC ourselves. A couple married for six years, no issue from that pregnancy, from that uh, marriage. And we prayed with them, I just prayed with them, and now they're expecting twins. Yeah. Those are examples of how the kingship anointing operates. Declarations, decrees. When you begin to make decrees and declarations, 
what you are doing is you are stepping into your kingship authority in God's kingdom. And you are doing that by that measure. And as you begin to consecrate yourself in that line, fast, pray, obey the Holy Spirit, you begin to grow in ranking. Yes, the Bible tells us that we are all seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. However, there are levels. That's why you won't get the same results with Bishop Oedia if you pray. <laughs> it's evident. It's, it's not because they are special. They understand something called the kingship anointing. And that anointing can change people's lives for the better. In the month of March, we looked at the priestly or the priesthood anointing. This is all from Revelation 1 verse number 6. For he hath made us kings and priests unto God. Like I said earlier, the birth, death, resurrection and ascension of Christ on the throne translated every Christian, not just entrepreneurs, every Christian, and made them a king and a priest. But there is an anointing that helps you function optimally in these areas. As a priest, we explained in the book of Hebrews, the Bible said we have a high priest in heaven. The model priest we have is Christ Jesus. He is a priest of priests. He stands as a man in heaven, making intercession for you and I. And he says, for every high priest is appointed to offer up gifts and sacrifices. So the job of a priest in any family, in any company, in a particular land, is twofold as a priest. You offer up gifts and you offer up sacrifices. Hmm. Perhaps things have been happening in your in your family. Someone called me, a friend called me the other day. Um, every, she said it like every five or every six years, they have death, deaths in threes. In threes. So, father can die, one uncle dies, then one child will die. It takes three people at once. There is a priest, or there was a priest in that family that offered sacrifice to a deity that made for that provision. And I told him what to do. I said, what you have to do is to raise up another altar unto God. And if you can take 21 days of midnight prayers, continuous for two hours, 12 midnight to 2 a.m., for 21 days, you will see the hand of death stopped in your family. He did it somehow, reluctantly, he did it. Because what you are doing when you begin to pray like that in the midnight is you are offering something called sacrifice. Sacrifice is giving up something of value in exchange for something of a higher value. You can give up your sleep to save somebody else's life. That is something of value, sleep. You gave it up to give life to somebody in your family. So, this guy did this thing and broke the chain of three every six years, dying. One person went, second person, the third person did not go. Mysterious death, taxi, just crossing the road path, death. And they can be in London, they can be in Germany, they can be in China, it will pick people up. But when a priest steps into that office and begins to offer up another sacrifice to the king of kings and the god of gods, it is who has the higher priesthood that wins. It is. That's how it works. Many of us watch Nollywood, we watch African movies. If you don't watch Nollywood, let me see your hand. You don't want to know <laughs> Is it bad one? Is it, what, what's the reason? I used to I used to watch Nollywood movies, and so I had a spiritual mentor. He would go to Nigeria. He would bring back a dozen or twenty movies at once, just for me to to watch. Um, at that time, I hadn't been back home. I left Nigeria two thousand and one. And I came back for the first time in 2011, so 10 years later. 
But between that, that time and that, this pastor will come and will give me 12, 13, 14 to when he comes from Nigeria. So I used to watch these movies and I would notice you will watch some of these ones that are diabolical, they will take a sacrifice in the, in the middle of the, road, of the night, they will be going to, to go and sacrifice to a deity, maybe by the river or a stream, something like that. That's priesthood. You had better see yourself as that priest and your own sacrifice is speaking in tongues. Yours is praise. It's called a sacrifice of praise. Yours is worship. Sowing seeds, sacrificial living, sacrificial giving. If you don't begin to see yourself as that priest, then what would happen is things will be happening in your family that you can't control, in your life that you can't control. There is a thing called the priestly or the priesthood anointing that a Christian can step into an office as a priest by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ and begin to offer sacrifice, something of value in exchange for something of a higher value. And then you can stay back the hand of death. Midnight prayer is not easy. It's not. Nobody said it was. Guys, can I be honest with us? Many of our contemporaries in business in Nigeria that you went to school with or started out in business with, they have gone to see one Baba to fast track their chances in life. What then is your own advantage? What is your advantage? There's a there's a there's a, a slogan that myself and a spiritual mentor we have in common. Say prayer is our juju. It's that simple. As they are doing their own incantations, you are speaking in tongues. That's what God gave you. It needs to become real to you that you are a priest in your family, that you are a priest in your organization. Guys, you can change things by offering the right amount of sacrifice. Time will not permit me. I would have shown you scriptural examples. For instance, when David sinned against God and 70,000 men were wiped out, he went to a man to buy his land and he offered up a sacrifice. And that's what stayed back the plague. That's what priesthood does. The priesthood anointed. That's what it does. So, many Christians that I come across, they don't have a prayer life. They don't have a prayer culture. Don't, I was like that before, don't get me wrong. Before God saved me, I used to pray my Korean prayer, five minutes prayers. In fact, you want to eat plus Jesus minus Satan. Yes. Cancel it out. Eat your food. And um, you can do that and do that and do that. But the truth is, at some point you realize that the only thing moving in your life is your age. Nothing is moving. If that is your situation, you had better become a priest quickly and begin to pray sacrifice to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's how you can change your future. Time will film to set many examples. But then, in the month of April, we looked at the oil of joy an anointing that makes for gladness, the oil of joy. This oil is, can you give me that scripture? Isaiah 61, verse 2 to 3. Give me that scripture, please. Does it work? That oil is what is responsible for the joy of the saints. Isaiah 61. The fact that there's a provision in God's kingdom 
that gives you and I joy, the joy of the Holy Spirit, as an anointing. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone before that? They're just always joyful, in a joyful state. They're just always happy or laughing or just... Yeah. Some people, by virtue of their planting um, of the Lord, for the display of his splendor. Have you found it? Isaiah 61. The oil of joy is real. It's real. And many of us, when we are in tight situations, you need that experience. And God in his mercy will release that on some people today. The oil of joy. The oil of joy, the anointing for gladness. You haven't found it. It says, He will provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness. 6 verse 3, verse 3. Oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. We did a thorough teaching on this thing. Go to our YouTube channel and you can find each of these things we're talking about in detail. I'm just running through them, summarizing them. Summarizing them. If those in the kingdom of darkness had a way of making their lives happy and clothing themselves with money and all, we too we have a way. We have to find a way in God's kingdom. So the oil of joy does three things. The first thing, God gives you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, despair, heaviness, that they may be called. It is to the end that you can be called trees of righteousness. One translation calls it oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Why? So that he may be glorified. And in our newsletter, I, I spoke about the experience I had when God took me into a trance and I saw how that oil comes on a, upon a person, really comes upon a person in the spirit realm. Let's move on. In the month of May, we looked at the interpreter's anointing. The interpreter's anointing is one of the most powerful anointings a Christian should have. A Christian. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and seasons. This is done by the interpreter's anointing. If this oil is upon your life, you will be able to interpret events, happenings, seasons, things that come around your life. It's a grace that makes you interpret dreams. Many of us have dreams. We don't understand what we see in dreams. In fact, my phone is full every day. I'm receiving dreams. Can you give me what this dream means? What this dream means? God wants you to, to have that point. It's not impossible. Our reference from Job 33, verse number 23. Job 33, verse 23. The Bible says, if there is a messenger, an interpreter, one in a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. If there is a messenger, and he calls that messenger an interpreter. A family needs an interpreter. It could be one in a thousand. Interpreters are scripturally scarce. An entire city like Lagos may, or Ikeda may have one interpreter. An entire state like Lagos, one. Maybe Nigeria, three or four. That can interpret the mind of God for this country accurately. It's an anointing called the interpreter's anointing. And God desires for you to not just interpret dreams. Yes, dreams are important. That's how God speaks to his people. But they are more than that. Events, seasons. You will know where you are in life at every point in time. What you should do. What you should not do. 
this event was a function of the interpreter's anointing. We could have gotten a fancier hall. We could have done a much more fancier decoration. God said, no, it's not time for that. Just thank God. Just do thanks to That's it. It's done by the interpreter's anointing. So, we're praying for a few people today on that anointing. You're welcome, sir. In the month of June, we looked at the anointing for greater works. The anointing for greater works and entrepreneurs in Christ. Each of these anointings are not things that we should read in the Bible and just say, oh, it's very nice. No, no, you can learn it, know about it, ask God for it. We did entire teachings on YouTube. Please find these teachings and get to hear them so that you can understand how they work. Jesus said in John 14, verse number 12, John 14, verse number 12, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. And I explained that the, the reason why you will do greater works is for the first course to understand that he's going to the Father, he went to the Father, and the Father must be glorified. That's why Jesus makes this anointing available. Greater works than these shall he do. Greater works than these shall he do. So if Jesus healed seven cripples in his three and a half years of ministry, you in 30, 40 years of ministry, you can raise 70 cripples. When we say greater works, it's numerically number one, and number two, spiritually as well. The Bible says that from the body of Peter, from the body of Paul, napkins were taken to heal the sick. That is a dimension of greater works. Peter's shadow will be passing and it will heal the sick and cast out demons. How do you explain that? So it's, it's not just numerically. Greater works in the intensity spiritually as well. Christ walked upon the earth three and a half years. And so we have more time. So he said greater works than these. Which means the anointing should be so intense in your life upon your marketplace ministry that even things that we did not see when Christ walked upon the earth, we would see them in greater measures in your ministry. He could, you could travel to China and begin to heal people in China. Christ didn't do that when he was alive. Greater works than these. Greater works than these. So, these are verses that everybody should memorize if you want to get these anointings. And for the sake of those who are just coming, we are discussing theme, anointed for the Father's business. Anointed for the Father's business. In the month of July, we looked at the pioneer's anointing. This is the anointing that makes for a pioneer in God's kingdom. If you are a business person, an entrepreneur, you need this one called the pioneer's anointing. You know, many years ago, I came to Lagos. The scriptural reference for that is Hebrews 12 verse 2. Hebrews 12 verse 2. I came to Lagos in 2019, and I set up a business in Lagos that failed. This business, we were the first to pioneer a dimension of project monitoring. I realized that a lot of my clients in the US were in two streams. I had the Nigerians who live in Nigeria who bought properties from us in America. And then I had the Nigerians in America, professionals, who bought houses through my company in the US and they used mortgages. And in 2019, I realized that a lot of them had one thing in common. About 70 to 80 percent of them then were building back home in Nigeria. When you saw about the diaspora remittances, we had about uh, 15 point something billion dollars in remittances in 2019. It's Nigerians sending money back home to build. That's why it's so high, just in case you're wondering. And so I realized that they all had one singular complaint. 
they sent money back home to family members and friends to, you know, help them build. And of course, you know how the story goes. So I began to research. And I began to research why this was happening. And I realized two important things. Number one, those that they sent money back home to were not on the same economic scale as them. So let's say you send someone $10,000. And uh, the person has his own business going on. Then his car breaks down all of a sudden in Nigeria. He will tell himself, let me dip into this money, then I'll refund it when I have the money. But they never refund it. That's where it starts from. So this was a very pronounced problem throughout Nigeria. It wasn't just in Lagos, everywhere in Nigeria. And even in some other African countries, the same thing happens in Ghana, same thing happens in Kenya. Then number two, I realized that there was no project monitoring firm that could give accountability and transparency to the building projects happening. And these guys would not leave the U.S. to come back to Nigeria to monitor the buildings because they were working and sending money back home from there. So, of course, my entrepreneurial self, light bulb, done business idea. And I realized that what we needed was a company that we could dispatch people to capture pictures and videos and report to them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis so that their minds would be at peace. We were the first to do that business in Nigeria, 2019. I don't have to tell you guys how much trouble we faced in that business. But um, we closed it down in uh, 2021, last year January. We closed it down. Of course, so many issues. But we were the first people, the pioneers of this idea. And so I asked God, like, why didn't this thing work? I lost over one twenty thousand dollars in this business. In fact, it was when I went on my retreat to weep about the business in December 2020 that EIC came from the Holy Spirit. And God said, You lacked something. It was called the pioneer's anointing. The pioneer's anointing is the horn God gives a business person to pioneer a new dimension, a new thing. And if you don't have this anointing, this grace upon your life, you'll be getting ideas. It's been natural to you. I, I can tell you what the symptoms are. I, I've been there. You'll be receiving ideas, but you will not be able to replicate those ideas. And you'll be wondering why. In fact, we were so busy. Busy doing, I don't know what we're doing, we're just being busy. But we're not replicating within ourselves. It's, it's symbolic and significant that you lack something called the pioneer's anointing. You lack it. You lack it. That's how it shows up for everybody. It's not just me. I've, I've spoken to many entrepreneurs that have had this experience. When God hasn't given you a grace to pioneer something, it's either because the time is not yet right, one, or you've not sought his face for a grace you don't know you even need. At that time, I didn't know I needed it. So I just burnt money. I was coming to Nigeria every month, every month, to oversee this business. We had 17 employees, had a big office in Yaba, all of that. But if you lack the pioneer's anointing your life, you pay for it. My doctor's first few words, I missed it because I was in Nigeria. But I was in a business that I didn't have any business doing. The pioneer's anointing is, is real. The Bible says in Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, and I because of the pioneer, not the author, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. 
looking unto Jesus, the pioneer, which is another word for it, the author's anointing. If, if this grace is on your life, you'll be writing books. You'll be authoring many new things. You will start something, it will become a trend. It's the Bible's anointing. You will give somebody a nickname, it will stick. I'm telling you, that grace is real. The pioneer's anointing gives a person the grace to start something and it begins to replicate itself. And the Bible says Jesus was the pioneer of our faith. The pioneer. He was the initiator, the pioneer, the beginning, the person that pioneered and offered that faith. That's why you and I are Christians today. So he had the anointing without measure. He's the only one on earth that was anointed without measure. You and I carry it in portions, smaller portions. How can you tell me a person walks the earth three and a half years of ministry and the world worships him 2,000 years later? How do you explain that? There were no newspapers. See, anything didn't exist then. How did he spread the gospel? How did the gospel spread so fast? Despite all the persecutions, No major news out there. The Guardian wasn't alive. Punch. There was no punch. How did he do it? It's something called the pioneer's anointing. And if you're an entrepreneur, you need it. Seek God's face for that anointing. And so if there is a pioneer's anointing, there is a perfecter or a finisher's anointing as well. And that will be the last one we look at at EIC this year. But this grace... Guys, if you don't have it and you realize your business is not replicating itself the way it should, pause. Don't spend any more money. Don't make my mistake. Seek God's face for this grace. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You see, spiritual things are so soft. They look so immaterial, but they can change your life. They can change your life. We've heard Apostle Selman say, it is what is on your head that controls what's around you. It's not a lie. If God gives you eyes to see in the spirit, you, you can see what's on people's head. One day, somebody called me, and I was looking at the person through, through Zoom, or Zoom, and I was seeing a calabash on the person's head. And I was like, ah, am I seeing well? And I was seeing a calabash, a calabash on the head. It explained where they were in life, why they were going through what they were going through. Because what is on you controls what's around you. The anointing is a very dynamic thing, guys. The truth is this. When God gives you an anointing, hmm, it is signified by two things. One in heaven, and on the earth, it's a spirit. It's a throne in the heaven. Okay? But on earth, it, the spirit of that thing is attached to you. Oh dear, I don't have the words to explain this thing. The spirit dimension comes either upon you, comes around you, or comes within you. And then your result will follow. It will follow. You see my daughter today. My daughter, I have a three year old daughter. She is so attached to her mother. It's the story of wherever Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> she, it's just an attachment. It's the same thing. Wherever peace goes, this spirit will go with you. Okay.
Guys, believe me, it is what is on you that controls your reality in this life. It's what on you. And if it is not there, if it is truly not there, you cannot get the results you're looking for. So I cannot overemphasize the need for the pioneer's anointing. Entrepreneurship is a gift from God. Is this debate, are entrepreneurs made or are they born? Yes, you can debate it all day. But I know that they are entrepreneurs, then they are serial entrepreneurs. I happen to be a serial entrepreneur. Ideas come to me naturally. And what God gave me is the grace to be able to execute on those ideas. I had to pause when I realized that my ideas, I could not replicate them. If you, if you lack the pioneer's anointing, your results will show it. It will show. Don't look far. What you are looking for is the pioneer's anointing. So, in the month of August, we looked at the healing anointing. Reference Mark 7, 27. Mark 7, 27. The healing anointing, of course, we all know about that one. This is not a a rare anointing. It's a popular one. Jesus, of course, walked very much in this grace. The healing anointing is the one that is responsible for healing infirmities in three levels. We are used to seeing it on the body. But there are infirmities on the soul and there are infirmities on the spirit level. A person can be sick in their spirit. A person can be sick in their soul. A person can be sick in their body. Man is three in one, spirit, soul, and body. So when God gives or makes available the healing anointing, what he is doing is he's making available a grace to heal people in these three levels. And of course, our leaders did a very thorough job. Uh, Brian went first, and he explained the healing anointing um, it's on YouTube. Then Amy went next. She explained the healing anointing very thoroughly as well. And then I came and I explained the back end of healing. What you guys don't know when this anointing works is that it is, it is operated in partnership with angels. There are many spirits that bind people in infirmities. So let's say a person has Give me a popular sickness in Nigeria. What's popular sickness in Nigeria? Nigeria. <laughs> the demon is not the mosquito, okay? <laughs> no, something else. He says something else. Let's just say typhoid, diabetes, whatever it is. Demons come into a person's life by blood, through blood, one. They can come in through sin. Sin, they can come in through sex. There are some openings that we, we give demons. And when they come into our life, what we will see is sickness and infirmity. And that infirmity can be in your body, it can be in your soul, it can be in your spirit. The infirmities in the soul, anxiety, depression, Okay, schizophrenia, all kinds of stuff. Because the soul is of the, of the mind, emotions, will, intellect, and, co and conscience, excuse me. So these infirmities in the soul are just as bad, if not more worse, than the ones on the body. You also have infirmities in the spirit. A person's spirit. The Bible says, the spirit of a man shall sustain its infirmities. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? So there is a possibility not for it to just sustain a wound on your body or on your soul. In your spirit as well. It's biblical. A wounded spirit. A wounded spirit, who can bear? When your spirit is wounded, guys, it's, it goes beyond depression. That's why people, people will write suicide notes because a boy left them. Then you want to commit suicide. It's a wounded spirit. 
you cannot bear it. Because the spirit of a man is what is meant to sustain its infirmity. So when the healing anointing is released, angels go into operation, they bind up the demons that have caused these infirmities, that are lodged to secure and enforce these infirmities. Many times, if sin is the cause, then the best thing is to repent. But I've seen it's blood as well. Your father had diabetes, now you have diabetes. It can happen through blood as well, it's an opening. Sexual partners, you had the wrong sexual partners. And for that reason, something from that person left them and came into your life. There are openings that we need to seal as God's children. But God in his mercies makes the healing anointing available. He says healing is the children's bread. It is, it is your right as a child of God to experience healing. It is your right. It's your God-given right. If you have an infirmity in the body level, soul level, or spirit level, then God has made a provision for you. And I shared an encounter in a vision with Reverend Christian Kilome. That man is a custodian in this dimension. In that vision, he came to me and he said, walk with me. And I began to walk with him. Then he said, when the healing anointing is released, it causes a regeneration of dead cells in the person's body. And it can also kill cells that are bad, like cancerous cells. I was like, that's very interesting. So we see that the spiritual implication is that angels go bind up the demon, but then the person is still hurt or, you know, there's still something. Let's say the, 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 the hand is amputated, for instance. Then a regeneration of cells to make that hand stretch out begins to occur. It's a very powerful anointing. So that's how the healing anointing works. And then in the month of September now, we are on the prophetic anointing. The prophetic anointing is one that we are still analyzing as a whole. Scriptural reference, the first one. Um, first Kings 19.16. First Kings 19 verse 16. Also, Joel 2 verse 8. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Like I told you guys, the anointing has two dimensions. A spirit is given. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what's the result of that? It says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay, so in verse 16 here, the Bible says, And Jehu the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So a person must anoint you to be a prophet, to function as a prophet. It's not just giving us general grace. That's the mistake we make in the body of Christ. We feel like um, certain dimensions are, revert, are reserved for certain men of God. And the rest of us, what do we then get? There are ways to get these anointings. The first way is by impartation. Impartation. A person that has that dimension can impart that grace upon your life. It's like my sister Mercy. She's in this room. And somebody wants to enter this room. She has to open the door for that person. When someone has accessed a dimension in the body of Christ, they have the grace and the authority to let somebody else enter that room in the spirit realm. So if I carry the prophetic anointing, for instance, and somebody here wanted to become a prophet, I can impart that grace into your life. However, if you don't have the consecration that backs that person, if you don't have the fasting schedule, the prayer regimen that backs that person, what you would have is a seed. It won't grow. It won't grow in your life. So many of us run to men of God, impart us, pray for us, this and that. 
But the more important question is, what do you do to maintain and grow in this grace? Because if you don't know it and you don't do it, you will never see the full potential of it. Many Christians don't live a consecrated life. We know about prayer, we know about fasting, but we don't know about consecration. And every anointing we've spoken about is backed by a consecration. If you don't know it, you would misuse it. And it won't grow, it won't thrive the way it should thrive in your life. So, that was the entire experience of EIC this year thus far. God gave us the thing anointed for the Father's business. And God's business is marketplace ministry. Okay? It is winning souls, the salvation of souls. Pulpit ministries and marketplace ministries share the same goal, guys. We are not in competition or anything like that. It's the salvation of souls and the discipling of men to make heaven. But what we've seen in Nigeria, to a large extent, is pulpit ministries. We don't know much about marketplace ministry. We know of the big churches, and we love them. Thank God for them, because they nurtured us to grow and become independent for us to stand on our feet. But what about those that will never make their way to the four corners of a church? Should they be condemned? Where would your Muslim friend end up? Kenny? Eh? As a young sail, in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So God, what God is doing in these last days, guys, is He's raising marketplace ministries. Entrepreneurs in Christ is only one of them. Many more will spring up in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Kenya. Because God's emphasis in these last days is not for us to, to do a come ye into the church. It's to go ye out into all the world. And what most churches have done is they come ye into the church. That's the truth. We don't condemn them. It's just that we know better now. God needs to reach that, that brother, that sister, that Anifa worshiper. A few years ago, I jumped on a flight to Nigeria. I gave this story before to one of our, one of our people our classes. And the guy next to me was an American guy. And this guy was very excited going to Nigeria for the first time. So we began talking, and um, I said, what takes you to Nigeria? He said, I'm an Ifa worshiper. I said, what did you say? He said, I'm an Ifa worshiper. Very proudly, an American. So the first thing I did was to call the attendant. Please, can you relocate my seats? Because I don't want this guy's atmosphere to... I'm going to be praying on this flight, so please just find it, a quiet seat for me. So I left his side. And then God rebuked me so sharply. If you don't preach to him, who do you think will preach to him? I still said no. God is an Ifa worshiper. Ifa worshiper. Even in my, people are wondering if I'm in my country. He went towards it. So, God was merciful to me. I didn't talk to the guy. Then on the flight back, he told me he was going to Ibadan to meet the priest, the far priest. An American, first time in Nigeria. First time, African American guy, young guy. He happened to be on the same flight with me on our way back to the US. Just coincidentally, he stayed for a week, he stayed for a week as well. But this time, our seats were not together. And so, I was praying and God said, I'm going to give you one more chance to talk to this guy. So we had a layover, I think it was in Germany. We had a layover in one of these countries. So we came out, we were waiting to board the next flight to go to the US. And then I just said, let me just talk to this guy. It was as if this guy was waiting for me to ask him how far. He said, my brother, how was your Ifa trip? 
He said, bro, I suffered. He said, I stepped on the floor. This and this happened. They made me eat from a calabash. I said, who were you looking for? An American. What was his experience? His parents were pastors in the US. But he did not see the model Christianity. He saw them always fighting, arguing. They made him despise the religion because they forced him to go to church. So when he gained his independence as a young man, he was determined to find every and anything but Christ. So he began talking. He even told me how he got sick with diarrhea. And he had, to, he had to use a pit latrine. An American. What were you looking for that was not lost? And I began to tell him the real message of salvation. I said, listen, the Bible says the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart. Sincerely. It's not all of these things that you went through and saw.
for some evangelists or some big pastors. No. As long as you are willing to be used as a bridge, the Spirit of God will use you to reach somebody else. The God of Christ is going to ask him for the healing anointing, the healing virtue that he gives his children, the real one, and ask God to fill you with that anointing, the healing anointing. Let's begin to pray. Asa parushe bese tembe ishe tembe dasa tamara zita pando ishe tembe tembe ishe tembe tumi. Thank you. Mashanda ba zita pete bese si pamba ishe bese. Zake tembe ishe tembe tumi ishe tembe tumi dasa. virtue that is domiciled upon this house. For as many people as hunger and thirst after righteousness, that will become the yielded vessels to reach God's people and become solution providers in their <coughs> city or in their industry. Let them carry this grace from today. Amen. I ask that you touch them. Let your angel touch them in one way or another. Amen. Qualify them 
by virtue of their heart posture. Amen. Father, I pray, oh God, for those desiring the prophetic anointing, I ask that you fill them up. Amen. Fill every single person Amen. with the grace for prophetic anointing. Amen. Father, appoint seers from Amen. this house. Appoint prophets. And for everybody watching us from online, I release that grace in your dimension. Amen. Hmm. Seven people, seven, you are receiving the prophetic anointing. Seven of you. Amen. Father, I release that grace. I Amen. ask that each one of them, you reveal to them the consecrations to back this anointing. Amen. Up. Father, the anointing that makes for a pioneer in your kingdom. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the pioneer, and the perfecter of our faith. I ask for oh God that you release that grace, pour it out upon them. Amen. For those that are you've called to be pioneers in this season. Oh, I see God pouring out the interpreter. One person is carrying the interpreter's anointing. Amen. The interpreter's anointing. Amen. I see a person, you came here with baggage. Baggage. I see you holding a baggage. And the Spirit of God wants to touch you where you are right now. Amen. I ask for God, for that person that came here with baggage. The grace of God that resolves everything. I speak life into their case. Amen. Father, I ask for God. For those that want to carry the oil of joy. Amen. That makes for real gladness and true gladness Amen. upon the face of the earth. Yes. Let their lives be changed. Amen. Turn their garments of mourning to a garment of praise. Amen. Exchange beauty, ashes for beauty. Amen. Beautify their lives, oh Amen. Lord. The Lord says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Release strength in their direction. Amen. Let joy be domiciled in their vessel. Amen. For the anoint kings for yourself in this Amen. house. Anoint priests that understand the place of sacrifice. Amen. Priestesses Amen. that will come and give you their time in prayer at night. Amen. Father, let there be a stirring upon their lives, upon Amen. their soul, Amen. upon their hearts, oh God. Amen. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Amen. And your word says you you made us kings and priests unto God. For as many as you want to anoint in this place with the priestly anointing, a new dimension. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. The dimension of overflow, oh God, that makes for a priestess and a priest. There are three people in this crowd. God is touching you right now with his grace. Amen. You are going to become the gatekeepers in your family. Amen. You will allow and you allow things that will come to pass in your family. Amen. Through the words of your mouth, through your decrees and declarations, the kingship anointing functions. Amen. I ask that you anoint five people in this place with that grace. Amen. The kingship anointing. Amen. Oh God. My goodness. They are anointing for greater works. Amen. This one is coming to exceed what your parents did. Amen. To surpass them. That's Amen. what God is doing in this Amen. season. Yeah. He wants to take you away from the hold of captivity. Amen. Father, I ask for oh God that you break them loose from that chain. Amen. And that the anointing for greater works be upon their life. Amen. Father, we trust you. Thank you. That you visit each person overnight. Amen. That something of tangible spiritual results in their lives. Amen. That they will know that from this meeting they picked something up. Amen. That will change their lives for the better. Amen. I ask, oh God, that as many healers as you can anoint in this place, that will look onto the cross and bring men and women out of the pit of bondage. Amen. You make that possible. Amen. If anybody here is sick, I release the healing anointing of God to touch you where you are. Amen. The Lord rebukes every demon of affliction. Amen. Every paralysis. Everything Amen. that is not of God in your body. I uproot it as a priest of the most. Amen. Amen. I ask for God that they will move from this place, from this meeting, and their lives will not remain the same. Amen. Through the prophetic utterance and unction upon this house, I ask for that you open a new level of grace for Amen. every person. That they will do what they do with a particular oil that would show that something was 
He poisoned it upon their lives. Amen. To bring about a change. Amen. For those that travel from afar, Father, reward them. Amen. I see a person you are in prison, you are holding behind a prison door. And the Spirit of God wants to break you free. Amen. Amen. Father, I ask for God. I see you peeping out of that prison door. Shall the lawful captive not be delivered? To subvert a man from his cause, the Lord does not permit. I release you by the authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and I declare that you are free for whom the Amen. is free. Amen. Hmm. Somebody else, the things that you hold on to that come into your hand, they leave within minutes or days. You just, you just leave. And you don't know how they go. You can't seem to hold on to money. Father, I pray that that spirit making that available, making that possibility happen, that you bind up that demonic force. Amen. Amen. There's somebody listening to me. You've tried three times. You've tried something three times. The Spirit of God says you've tried three times and you failed. It says try again. I will put something called the pioneer's anointing upon your life. Amen. And you'll be able to excel this. Amen. I see a basin being filled with water. There shall be an abundance of rain. Amen. Let prosperity visit each person in their home. Amen. I ask for God. That it be a, the real life testimonies from this meeting. Amen. Thank you for the grace to thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. For your mercies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. God bless you.